This is an example problem about entries for capital leases on the west east side with guaranteed residual value. So you can see the problem here. It says Ultima Inc. has a policy of acquiring their equip equipment through leasing. On January 1, 2011, Ultima entered into a lease with River Inc. for a new truck that had a selling price of 315000 the lease stipulates that annual payments of $61,800 be made, will be made for six years. The first lease payment is made on January 1, 2011, and the subsequent payments are made on December 31st of each year. Ultima guarantees a residual value of $33,535 at the end of the six-year period. Ultima has an incremental borrowing rate of 11%, and the implicit interest rate to River is 10% after considering the guaranteed residual value. The economic life of the truck is eight years. Ultima uses the calendar year for reporting purposes and straight line depreciation. So what we're going to do is compute the amount to be capitalized as an asset on the lessee's books. And Ultima does know that River's implicit rate is 10%. Then we're going to prepare a schedule showing the reduction of the liability by the annual payments after considering the interest charges. And we're going to do the journal entries that would be made on Ultima's books for the first two years of the lease. Assume that the lessor sells the truck for 24000 at the end of the six-year period to a third party. Give the ultimate journal entries necessary to record the payment to satisfy the residual guarantee and to write off the leased equipment accounts. So first, the present value of the lease right here. <clears throat> In a financial calculator, you have six payment periods, an interest rate of 10%. This is the lower of the two interest values. Payments are 61,800. The future value is 33,535, and this we use the guaranteed residual value right here. When you compute the present value on those inputs, you get 315,000. So the first thing that we need to do, or the sec that was the first thing. The second thing is to prepare a schedule showing the reduction of the liability by the annual payments after the interest charges. <clears throat> so that's what this table is showing us right here. So, when you set up these tables, you have the dates right here, the description, um, the amounts of the payments, the interest expense, and the principal, or the amount of the payments that are going towards the principal. Then you have the lease obligation. So in this first row, oops, the initial balance is 315000 On January 1st, we have the first payment as well. So there is no interest because it's the it's on the same date that the lease was put into effect. So the full 61800 goes to the principal. So that reduces the lease obligation by 61800, which is 253200. Now on the next payment date, January 31st, we have the same payment amount, but now we have an interest expense of 25320. And the way you get that is you take this previous lease obligation, times this by 10%, and that gives you 25320 You minus that number from the payment amount, and that leaves you with the amount that's going towards your principal. So then you reduce this lease obligation by the principal amount, not by the full payment this time, just by the, whoops, just by the payment amount. And it just, you know that follows that same pattern all the way down and uh, <clears throat> so for number three we're going to do the journal entries that would be made on Ultima's books for the first two years so the very first entry is a debit to leased equipment and a credit to obligations under capital lease so you will see that this entry right here is the entry to record the lease the total value or the full value of the lease and on January 1st also is that first payment. That's this entry. You have a debit to the account we just credited, obligations under capital lease, and there's no interest, so this full payment goes against the principal. So the full, and the full payment is always in cash anyways. So then, at the end of the year, on December 31st, we have the second payment. You have a debit to obligations under capital leases, this is to record the second lease payment and this one has interest involved so you get these numbers from that table that we created above so 36,480 you'll see that's the principal amount on this first payment 
it's the second payment, but it's the first payment that includes any interest. And then the interest expense is 25320. So if we come back down, interest expense 25320 and obligations under capital lease 36480. And that those added together equal the full payment amount of 61,800. Now also on December 31st, we've got to record amortization. So we debit amortization expense on le leased equipment and we credit accumulated amortization of leased equipment. And because there isn't a transfer of title or the bargain purchase option criteria isn't satisfied, the amortization period is the lease term. And you take 315,000 minus the um, guaranteed residual value, 33,535, you divide that by 6, that gives you an annual amortization amount or accumulated, amort accumulated amortization of 46,911. So then uh, this will be the third payment. It's debit to obligations under capital lease, debit to interest expense, credit to cash. And you just get these values from the table again. And then you have the same amortization expense, once again, of 46911 Now this is to record this final lease payment. <clears throat> um, assuming the lessor sells the truck for 24000 at the end of the six-year period. So we have accumulated amortization of leased equipment. This is the number of the six payments, 46911 all added together. So 46,911 times 6. That's the full account or uh, the full balance in the accumulated amortization of leased equipment. And then you have obligations under capital lease. This is the number from the table above. This is what remains of the principal that we had to pay off. And this number is from the table above also. It's the last interest expense entry in that table. If we go look at the table, interest expense. 3049 principal 3486 so we have those two numbers then you have the loss on the leased equipment this is the amount of the guaranteed residual value minus the 24,000 that river sold the truck for at the end so 33,535 minus 24,000 that equals 9535 and you credit that amount to cash because that's the difference you had to pay and then we're crediting leased equipment for the $315,000, and that was the full lease value. And that is how you do this problem.